Welcome to the Capital News, everybody. I hope everyone enjoyed their weekend. So with that, let me get started with some of the news that took place over the weekend. As I'm sure many of you are aware, we have two additional Democrats who have entered the presidential race formally. Senator Amy Klobuchar of Minnesota weathered the elements. I mean, it was cool just looking at that woman give her, uh, make her announcement that she was running for president of the United States. So my hat is off to Senator Klobuchar for that. I don't even think she was wearing any gloves. Um, Senator Klobuchar has been painted so far, which obviously it's very early on in her campaign, but has been painted by the media as somewhat of a moderate. But given her recent interview with Rachel Maddow on MSNBC, who brought up this question with her, the senator said, I much more prefer to be viewed as a progressive. Now, this is interesting because this is something I've been saying for quite a while. These Democrats are going to want to outdo each other until they are off the stage. They move so far left, there's not going to be anybody on the stage because they're all off of it. So you have a senator who is already viewed as a moderate. Now, of course, typically in American politics, and I'm sure this is the case in most other countries as well, but to get a nomination, one moves further left if you're a Democrat or further to the right if you're a Republican. Sort of really bleed red or bleed blue as much as you can. And then after you get the nomination, you sort of start to move yourself back to the middle, back to a more moderate set of policies. I don't know if that's going to be able to happen on the Democratic side. This is going to be a circus. This is going to be a lot of fun. I'm very much looking forward to it. I hope you are, too, because this is, I mean, if you thought 2016 with President Tr with candidate Trump getting it in there and mixing everything up was interesting, you haven't seen nothing yet. The Republicans are finally coming around and uniting on a lot of policies. The Democrats, on the other hand, are all over the place. Over the next couple of years, I'm going to do episode after episode after episode of how these guys are just going to destroy each other. And while the Democratic field of presidential candidates is not really that big yet, we're expecting dozens of them to enter the race formally. And I expect probably the full, the full team of candidates will probably be ready to go probably by late spring, early summer at the latest. People want to get their names out there, especially if they don't have much name recognition. Um, Senator Amy Klobuchar is probably one such candidate. She's known, obviously, in the inner circles and people who closely follow politics, but outside the Beltway and outside of Minnesota, probably not too many people are aware of her. And so early on with that interview with Rachel Maddow, she's already trying to call herself a progressive. So this is going to be a lot of fun. They're going to outdo each other or attempt to outdo each other. 75% tax, no, 80%. 80 is not good enough, 90%. They're not going to know when or where to stop. And all you can do is, if you're President Trump, is just keep egging this on. Let a party divided destroy themselves. Let a party who is starting to advocate very strongly and very openly socialistic socialistic policies, let them defeat themselves. They're going to anyways. These ideas do not work. They're doomed to fail at inception. How these people can claim intelligence and an understanding and appreciation for history is beyond me. It's just part of the delusion. Another candidate who has formerly entered the presidential race. I guess this would be historic. This is the first Native American. But oh, wait a minute. Somebody's telling me, no. What? Oh, she's not. She's not Native American. Or she's 120th, 1,000th Native American. Pocahontas. Senator from Massachusetts, Elizabeth Warren, is entering the presidential race formally. I, I tell you, this is ridiculous. This woman was doomed before she even started. Doomed before she even started. 
I really don't even know where to start with Senator Warren because she has to be one of the most delusional of all of them, thinking she can actually win this thing. She already has the name recognition. She already gets her name out there with consumer protection and, and going after the big banks and this, that, and the other. And I have to tell you, with some of the things of going after the financial industry, at least from a standpoint of placing blame there, I agree with her on some of those things. Now, her policies to correct and fix them, completely backwards, no common sense, no rationality, nothing, just socialistic control. So those can't stand, and I cannot support those, will not support those. I honestly think the best move for her politically, obviously not to do it now because she just entered the race formally, but would be to bow out, make up an excuse, get out of it. Because if you want, if you want Senator Warren a long life in politics, stop now before you get way too deep into the, all of this. It's not a good policy for you. It's not a good move for you. Why do I say this? Because President Trump is going to have her every which way he wants to. He, he already gets under her skin. She already submitted her quote-unquote DNA test to see what her heritage is, what her lineage is. And for goodness sakes, people, the woman is a lawyer who I believed taught at the University of Pennsylvania and Harvard. Some of the top schools, not only in this country, but in the world. She's an attorney, and for some reason she thought one two-thousandth was enough evidence was enough evidence to state that she is a Native American. I mean, the only thing she has going for her is she is from a very blue and liberal state in Massachusetts. They might be able to overlook these things. And you have to understand this, too, from President Trump. He doesn't even care. He couldn't care less about this issue. This is all fun and games for him. But the senator took it seriously. And she fell right into his trap. I recall... I mean, it wasn't that long ago when she reported the results of her DNA test. And President Trump was in the White House lawn or about to, I don't know if he was coming or going to the White House, but he stopped and was speaking with the press corps for a little bit. And one of the questions was, have you heard, Mr. President, that Senator Warren had a DNA test? And that it showed that she was part Native American whether that be one two thousandth or whatever it was, are you aware? What was his response? He dismissed it. I couldn't care less. Who cares? Who cares, he said. And that's the point. He doesn't care. This is a game. He's messing with the senator. She took it seriously. She fell for it, just like the media did, because they're like, well, you tweet and you say all these things, Mr. President, about Pocahontas and Senator Warren and blah, 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 blah. He doesn't care. It's amazing how he gets everybody wound up over these things, these issues that mean absolutely nothing. It's funny to me. It's funny to a lot of other people. But for some reason, these Democrats and the media just take it as if it's gospel, as if he signed this in blood. It, it, it's just, again, part of the Trump derangement syndrome. It, it, it's out of control. It's out of control. And that response just makes it that much funnier. I, I don't care. Who cares? Who cares? Dismiss it. Who cares? The Cherokee Nations didn't want her. She's apologizing this and that. Okay, I can, I can get that. I can give her a little slack on some of this if, if that was the truth of it. Your family told you that you were Native American and you thought this was the case and blah, blah, blah. The question is how much 
Native American blood did she think she had in her? Right? Because we now know that she has used, that she was Native American to get into some schools. She put that on applications. So now it goes really sort of to motive. What was she doing? Did she know, Was she hoping that that would sort of separate her out from the rest of the crowd, give her a leg up? I don't know. But it kind of seems that way, doesn't it? I don't know how long she will last. Like I said, if she has any interest in really longevity in politics... Make up an excuse, bow out, say there's a whole bunch of good candidates on this side. And just leave the scene. Because once you get up there on that debate stage, Senator Warren, it's only a matter of time before your fellow Democrats come after you on it. Believe me. You know the president's going to do it. This is game for him. It's entertainment. And his base loves it, so he's not going to stop. So my prediction for Senator Warren, her, her campaign will not last for many moons. Now moving on to some other nonsense, uh, we continue with the soap opera in Virginia. Governor Northam sat down with CBS News for an interview. Basically referred to slavery as indentured servants. Of course, he's digging in, has dug in, and will not resign. Again, that was my stance. I told you very early on I, I would have advised the governor to stay in. Don't resign. This is not something that warrants resignation from the facts that we know at this point. And now we see that cooler heads, or at least some of the temper tantrum, is starting to dwindle. And now there's some more polls that are starting to come out and Fellow Virginians across the spectrum, even African Americans, are saying, you know what, he's been in service of the, of the state for a long time, never had any issues with him before, we voted for him to be governor based off of certain qualifications, this doesn't change much of anything in his ability to lead and implement the policies that at least the majority of Virginians voted for. Now, the saga also continues with Lieutenant Governor Fairfax. Other women have started to come forward. I believe a few staffers of his have also alleged sexual misconduct and have left his office, left his employ. But the Lieutenant Governor is calling for an investigation. Again, I stick to the American principle of innocent until proven guilty. So we'll continue to monitor and see what happens, what comes of an investigation should one take place. I imagine one will. But getting back to the governor, if you want to impeach the man, if you want to call for his resignation, do so under his beliefs in infanticide. Somehow, a pediatric neurosurgeon of many, many years thinks that that is a fine policy. I call it murder. From the extreme example that we have been given, that the baby will have been born or is about to be born, not even prematurely, nine months, We'll make the baby comfortable, and then we'll have a discussion. And if the mother and father want to resuscitate the baby, that's what we'll do. Are you kidding me? What country are we in? Where's the morality? It's immoral to have a wall on the southern border. Nobody calls for the walls and barriers that are up to be taken down. But killing an innocent baby... It's no problem. Let's light up the Freedom Tower in pink. Good job there, Governor Cuomo of New York. Freedom Tower, that's supposed to stand 
for freedom and you're lighting it up in honor of women deciding to terminate their pregnancy to kill their baby, something's going on in this country and it's not good. And they want to turn the rhetoric up on President Trump. Give me a break. Give me a break. This isn't even right and left anymore. This is right versus wrong. Good versus evil. That's one bridge too far. And that's a gift to President Trump, believe me, politically. Believe me. He will stick this in the Democrat Party's eye until the end of the election 2020, believe me. And I honestly think that's a bridge too far for most Americans. Right, left, independent, whatever party you are. All I can do is shake my head because it's just disgusting. You know, you want to have a civil and, and real conversation, maybe about abortion early on, we can do that, and this program will do that. But in the process of being born, my goodness, when will it stop? Maybe you learn after a couple years the kid's not uh, athletic. Well, I wanted an athletic child. Can we kill him? Yeah, sure, go ahead. I mean, you think I'm joking. It always starts small. It always starts as something that's not a big problem. It's an accomplishment. In this case, it's women's rights. Let me make this point clear to you. There are no women's rights. There are no men's rights. There are no children's rights. There are no gay rights. There are no Asian black rights. There's rights you're given as an individual, period, end of story. You don't have special rights because you're a man. You don't have special rights because you're a woman. Now, we have problems because people don't understand that or implement it properly? Absolutely. But separating everybody is not the solution. And believe you me, that's identity politics. That's the brainchild of the Democratic Party. And believe me, it's going to come home to roost in spades during this presidential election. I'm looking forward. I'm going to have a lot of fun going over this over the next basically two years. 20-some months until 2020 election. Oh, man, is this going to be interesting. What group each of these Democrats are going to run into? Which one are they going to pick? How many boxes are they going to check off? I mean, I don't know. I mean, I, I, as much as they love Bernie Sanders, can Bernie run? I mean, he's an old white dude, right? Old white man. Evil. <laughs> evil capitalist. Evil white man. I don't know. Kind of scary. Joe Biden. Is he going to get in? He's an old white dude. How's he going to do it? Michael Bloomberg, former mayor of New York City. Is he going to throw his hat in the ring? He's an old white dude, and boy, is he rich. Ooh. One of the richest, wealthiest men in the world. How are they going to tolerate him standing on stage? They've already boxed themselves in, and they don't even have a full playing deck of who's running for president yet. Now you got women up there, so that's one box checked. You have an African-American woman up there, so that box is checked. Native American woman, I don't know how you want to go about that one, but maybe you check that box. Julian Castro of Texas, Hispanic American, okay, you get to check that box, but he's a man. Is that going to be a problem? Is he going to be able to say anything about abortion? Because there's a lot of women out there when on the abortion rights, again, abortion, right, abortion rights, 
that don't think any man should have anything to do with making laws on abortion or anything that has to do with a woman. I mean, I don't know what that means. I don't know how that would be feasible. Would the opposite be true for men? Then if there was an issue that was before Congress that only had to deal with men's health, that no women could vote on it or have a say? I mean, that's ridiculous. But at least they're consistently de delusional. Oh, man, what a list. That was only a few things. That, that, those aren't even details of anything. I mean, my goodness. Two senators enter the race. The soap opera in Virginia continues. I mean, it's out of control. One of the other points that I wanted to get to, and I'm not going to spend enough time on it because I'm already more than halfway through this podcast, but I'm going to touch on it. And then I'll follow up with this tomorrow, unless there's some other big news that comes out. But in continuation of some analysis of President Donald Trump's State of the Union address, he made a couple statements in that address. One had to do with maternity leave. Now, I believe this is a big issue for his daughter, Ivanka Trump, which is fine if you have your children involved in your political process, this, that, and the other. Maybe somebody you can trust, you want her to be part of your inner circle. I get that. But there is a big problem with this in my mind because this is another, another government program. We don't know much details of it. Not much was discussed. It was basically a couple sentences, gets a nice applause from both sides of the aisle. Obviously, the Republicans are going to stand because it's coming from a Republican president. And obviously, the Democrats are going to stand because this is another social program. This is another government program. This is another government benefit. Well, in keeping with my criticism of the president during his speech, there was no talk of the debt. There was no talk of Social Security. There was no talk of Medicare, Medicaid. And how these programs and debt are out of control with no end in sight. Those are the real problems facing this country. In addition to a couple other things, obviously, the president mentioned. But a serious question, Mr. President, is what are the details? Who's paying for this? And how long is it going to last for? Amongst other things. Is this going to apply to both men and women, or just the mother? What about people who don't have children? And or do not want children? Because if you're going to have some sort of maternity leave, I'm assuming you're probably going to get a minimum of a month off to be with your newborn baby. At least a month. Now, what are the details? Is that person guaranteed pay? Is it 100% pay? 50% pay? 25% pay? Is it two months? Is it three months? How long are you going to do it? Is it something that the government's going to pay fully? Does the employer have to flip the bill? Or is it just all taxpayers? What are the details? And what about people who don't have or want kids? That's a choice. They work hard, just like the men and women who do have ch kids. Maybe they'd like a month off, paid. You going to do that? I mean, when does it stop? This is the problem with government programs. This is the problem with socialism, right from the outset. When does it stop? Because the argument is always fairness. Well, how is it fair for somebody to get a month off of work 
maybe two months. Again, we don't know the details, but you know it's going to be for some time. It's not going to be two weeks. So assume at minimum it's a month. And I would also assume it's probably going to be paid. And let's just assume for argument it's 100%. Now, I'm all for new parents to spend as much time with their children, especially newborns, as possible. Don't get me wrong. I, I'm not demonizing that at all. What I'm demonizing is another government program that we do not need, that we cannot afford, because we do not have the money. Even if we did have the money, it's another, it's another government program. We're supposed to be trimming back on government programs. You said it yourself in your speech, Mr. President, inadvertently. Not directly, but you said... This country will never be a socialist nation. Then how can you have another program like this? This is not for the government to decide. This is for the employer to decide. When I follow up with this in the next episode, I'll get into greater detail because there's another policy that he also mentioned during the State of the Union that I have issues with too. But keeping on this for a couple more minutes, it becomes a slippery slope. Just like every other government program. Well, let's put in the income tax. It's going to be a very low rate and it's only going to apply to some of the wealthy. Now it's subject to virtually everybody. Taxes are too high. There's too many of them across the board. Social Security wasn't supposed to be the meat and potatoes of anybody's retirement. And if you understand the history of Social Security, you were actually supposed to be dead before you even received it. Huh, you think I'm kidding? Look it up. That was a government scam, Ponzi scheme from day one. It just exploded into the mother of all Ponzi schemes as time has progressed. Because as time has progressed, we've had more and more progressives in the government taking away our rights, taking away our money, taking away our ability to use all of that money that's taxed to invest it in ourselves, in our businesses, or in the stock market, or even in government bonds. It really doesn't matter where you would have put it because it's your money. You should be the one to make the decision, not the government. Medicare, Medicaid, same thing. That's out of control. Now you got the back and forth with the Affordable Care Act, Obamacare. It was passed, held up in the courts, deemed constitutional. Now the mandate's gone, basically strips the whole thing of any power or enforcement. Another judge said, well, once that's gone, it's really not a tax anymore. It's unconstitutional. Now it's held up in the courts again. Probably going to be turned down this time. It's probably going to be found to be unconstitutional if and when it makes it to the Supreme Court. This is why you don't give 535 nut jobs in Washington, D.C. power and authority over such important aspects of every one of our lives because it becomes a political football. Democrats are in power. You have all this crap. Republicans are in power. You have all their crap. And it goes back and forth. Why do you even, why, why do you want to be in this crazy game of back and forth, this pinball? We're the ball. We're the ones going back and forth. We're the monkey in the middle. So I don't like it when a president who says we will never be a socialist country to start talking about another program from the federal government and not talk about a lot of the programs that are bankrupting this country. 
and are contributing to inflation. Increase in the cost of living. No discussion. So I'll focus more on the next episode of maternity leave. The other thing that the president mentioned had to do with health care and pre-existing conditions. And I'm going to get into it with examples of how this really starts to infringe on employers. And what about their rights as employers and their abilities to run, in many cases, a small business? Because, you know, if you have a larger company, you have more resources to tackle these things. You may have a full-blown HR department and a whole host of other things. You have the infrastructure to handle these types of policies and regulations. It just becomes another burden on a small business who doesn't have those types of resources and infrastructure when it's the small businesses who are really the lifeblood of any economy. But we'll get into that discussion. Thanks for joining me, everybody. This is the Capital News. I'm Alex Caritas. Godspeed.